The views and opinions expressed by the host and the guests of the Wild West Crypto Show are just that, views and opinions. We do not give financial advice. We highly recommend anyone considering entering into this very volatile market seek the advice of a financial advisor and never risk more than you would risk on a roll of dice in Vegas. The Wild West Crypto Show is designed to entertain and inform our audiences. Thank you for tuning in. I've got no remorse. My nest egg looking pretty. Brent and Drew the boys showed the world immutability. Jack and Hash is on the blockchain. Try not to be caught. The world says, short the banks, buy your Bitcoin. Folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And Brent, it is, how do we start the show? Corona, Corona, Corona. <laughs> corona, Corona, Corona. What else is there? <laughs> what is it? We need to do a song. We ought to do a jingle. Bye, you know? Corona. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, but uh, now it's a, folks, I mean, it's crazy times. And, you know, I know it is for everybody out there, as we've been telling y'all, we, I mean, just remain calm. I mean, we will get through this. Feel bad for those that we're going to lose. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we lose 50,000 people a year to, to car crashes. And unless it hits you directly, none of us ever cry over it. Yep. You know, yep. it's part of doing business. So anyway, I, I hate to make it sound, you know, so, so crass. But, so crass. You but, know, yeah. Math is a stubborn thing. It is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, cryptos are actually kind of stabilizing yeah. right, in, yep. in this. You know, the market's, man, gone like a... Bouncing all around like a yo-yo. It but, is. You know, but... You know, cryptos is is kind of building a nice looking little trend, mm -hmm. and so you kind of wonder where they'll move from here. Mm -hmm. And I think the direction's up. I, I do too. I do too. As people aren't wanting to handle money, I mean, oh, yeah. now in the stores, everywhere that you go now, even the lumberyard, they have the oh, yeah. plexiglass. We should have bought we, stock yeah. in plexiglass. If we'd have had plexiglass. <laughs> we'd have cornered the plexiglass market. We'd have done better than Hunt Brothers did on silver. <laughs> That's in the right. 80s. So yeah. That's right. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have Manny <laughs> Alicondra. Yep. Yeah. You know? Manny on the spot. Yeah. In, in New in, York City. From New York City, and you know he's starting his own show. Yeah. And it's Ma Manny's point of view. Yep. You know, yep. and he's actually a pretty fart smell. I mean, pretty smart feller. So, you know, I, you know, it'll be kind of interesting to hear his point of view, you know. Oh, you know, we got the ultimate house giveaway that's going to be launching the $250,000 home. So if you'd like an upgrade from where you are now, yeah. or if you need to downsize in preparation of retirement, Enter the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home challenge. Yeah, uh, Bobby, put that uh, URL down there. It's free to enter, and actually, this is one of our associates. And uh, and the, free it, is better than wholesale. It is. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. And folks, what this actually is, it's going to be a custom built home, but it's going to be all in a lot in San Antonio, and they're going to do this first one in San Antonio. It'll be given away in December. There's no obligation to enter. You just get in, you register, and then you can actually get more than one entry into this thing by referring friends, sharing, doing other stuff. I think it's a great, oh, yeah. kind of a cool place. You know, I've got a really neat guest on Over the Fence Post. We'll, we'll save that for later. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, we've got Jonathan, Cryptocurrency Wire. we got the good. The bad and, and the, the ugly. ugly. Yeah, and then... Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk some cowboy logic on yep, today's yep, show. And so, yep. folks, it's going to be a great show, the Wild West Crypto Show. We'll see you back here in two minutes. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And we have with us Mr. Manny Alicandro. Because, yeah. you know, Manny's, he's starting his own show called Manny's Point of View. Well, it, you know, he's got a good point of view. And uh, you got a great view as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank Not you. Not just a point of view, but great view. So, Manny, you're, you're our boots on the ground. It looks like you're right there. If I were to guess, having spent a little bit of time in New York, you're right there on Broadway, you know, by City Hall, it looks like, huh? 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm right here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting through uh, Corona here. You know, I'm going to duke it out and we're going to, we're going to get through this. You, you bet. Absolutely. And that's what we've been telling people. I mean, there's, there's all this chicken little sky is falling and fear and all that, but the reality is we will get through this and we'll be better for it. And hopefully a bunch of the weapons get laid down and we start working together, you know, more unified. Uh, Brent and I've been putting that message out literally every day for the last couple of weeks. And so, Manny, you being on the ground there in New York, which, you know, everybody in the world knows that New York City is really kind of the buzz of the planet. I mean, there's, you hear about Dubai and all this stuff, but everybody goes, you know, New York is central. And tell us what's happening as a result of this coronavirus there in New York City. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks again for having me. So we're pretty much uh, in, in, in a lockdown, right? So we have stay-at-home orders, the governor of New York, the governor of New Jersey, the people, a lot of people live in New Jersey, work in New York. Um, everybody's working from home to the extent they can. Very little, if anything, is open. Grocery stores are open. Liquor stores are open, which is actually good. There's some places to get takeout. Um, restaurants are open and bars. You could just go in, order food, and take it out. You can't sit there. So they're really enforcing social distancing. They're thinking this is going to keep occurring. We're going to be in a situation for probably another couple of weeks to the end of April. And then hopefully the curve is flattened every day. The stats come out, you know, they're pretty bad in terms of people dying. It seems like less people are dying, which is very good. There was concern about a lot of hospitals being overridden with beds. I mean, fortunately, I think we're okay with hospital beds, with ventilators. A lot of people now seem to have masks. When I go out, I wear a mask. I wear gloves. I wrap my phone in in cellophane just as precautionary. So it's weird, though. You know, a lot of people are outside. I go out once or twice a day really to buy groceries and just to kind of get some air. But you could tell people are really kind of freaked out in terms of interacting with people. People won't get on an elevator together. Like in my building, when I get on an elevator, I make sure it's just me and my family. I won't get on if other people are on. I'll let them go in front of me. And it's a new way of life. I hope it's temporary. I want us to get back to work in, you know, hopefully a couple of weeks. But it really means we have to be comfortable and confident. I'm feeling a little worried that people aren't. Well, I tell you what, we're not comfortable down here. It's hot in Texas right now. I mean, my gosh, it's what, in the mid-80s or something. It'll kill coronavirus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's killing a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, it's trying to kill me is what it's trying to do. Let me ask you a question, Manny. One of the things that I hope for is is that this is the kind of paradigm shift that we all think it's going to be, but not just when it comes to medical stuff. I mean, in my opinion, this has exposed so many, uh, we could call it atrocities, but I mean, we've all seen real atrocities, but it has exposed a lot of deep state, um, no good, don't get the job done, taking the money out the back door, adding a bunch of pork to the, to the bill. I mean, it seems like to me that, that this is an ideal time to make some systemic changes across the board. I mean, uh, in finance, in taxation, in all kinds of arenas, uh, in how our government interacts with us. And there's many of those that are libertarians, which are most of our listeners, because anybody that's into crypto is generally a, a libertarian. Um, you know, we've been hollering for uh, Make America Free Again for quite a while. And in fact, we think that we won't really make America great until we make America free. And you actually coined that. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah that, that's mine. So I, did we copyright? Yeah. I, I don't know. We will though. Yeah. He's we will. Attorney, Quick. So, copy, yeah. Manny. Manny. Yeah. Copyright that for me, will you? So let, let's make America free again. What are your thoughts on that? Sitting there at ground zero. No, that's a great point. I mean, we really were not prepared for this, right? So not pointing any fingers, whether it's Trump. The, the governors, the mayors, the people in the local government, we're just not prepared. We're not prepared both from a health perspective in terms of giving people the medical services and deploying what, what, what I call scaling up, right? How quickly, if it wasn't Corona, God forbid, if it was some kind of terrorist attack in a subway in Madison Square Garden during a Knicks game, and there's thousands of people that are injured at the same time that would have to flood hospital beds. How do we deploy that and put it in motion, right? We've exposed ourselves that we can't do that, right? We, we're fortunately, you know, we, we made the public aware that we don't have any crisis management. Secondly, unfortunately, our economy's folded as well. And we have a lot of vulnerabilities in our, in our economy that now we've exposed 
as well in terms of that we really can't handle anything of this magnitude in terms of, okay, we shut things down, but it was very disorderly. Now I'm worried about how do we ramp them up? Mm -hmm. In so doing, there's a lot of red tape. Look at these people getting SBA loans. A lot of people are declined. There's confusion how people didn't get the relief checks. If you're a retiree and you didn't file taxes, how are you going to get that check? right? You have to register with the IRS. I mean, it's so much confusion, which I totally agree is due to this red tape. And now look at taxes, right? Our taxes are not due in April, they're due in July. So a lot of stuff and things, you know, as a lawyer, I'm telling you this stuff that was absolutely so important. We got to do this. We got to get this done by a certain date. It's, it's discretionary. People are waving dates and moving things around and saying, don't worry about this. That's awesome. But we shouldn't let this opportunity slide. We should take advantage of it. And if it's not necessary, get the red pen out, delete it. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. bring it back. Banking yeah. laws, regulations, make our lives simpler. We added all this complexity, state, federal, all local um, ordinances and laws just made our lives impossible to run a business. Make it easier to start a business because these people who are shut down, let's get them ramped up as quickly as possible with the least amount of red tape. Yeah, well, we, we, need to, we need to fast track them getting back into business. But you know what, let me tell you, and, and, and we've talked a lot about this, bringing manufacturing home, bringing our jobs home. There's a video out there I saw yesterday, 25 years ago, Trump was being interviewed long before, I'm not gonna say he never didn't have aspirations for the White House, but it was long before he was up there running. And he said, we're outsourcing all of our jobs, we're outsourcing all of our manufacturing, we're spending money around all the world, not taking care of our own people. It's a video from 25 years ago, and I'm telling you, if you put gray hair on them and a few more wrinkles, or orange hair, I guess, <laughs> yeah, and a few more wrinkles, it is the exact same message that he's given as president but he was sounding those alarms a long time ago, and that's what I hope oh, yeah. we get back to. Yeah, we need to bring things back, or maybe if we can't fully, maybe move things to India, right? It's a, it's a different country, educated people, they speak English. If we really can't bring things all back, move it from China to India. We'll have better relations with India, and the same thing I don't think would happen with India. Yeah. Hey, hey Manny, listen, we've got about 20 seconds left. What I'd like for you to do, because you're now on flix.net, F-L-I-X-X.net, we'll put it on here, with your own show, to give people 15 seconds on what you're going to be doing. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm excited about launching the show. I just I filmed a couple of episodes. And we're really going to talk about interesting things in terms of my point of view here in New York. We're going to talk about Corona which we have already. We're going to talk about getting loans to people, how people could fill out applications and, and, you know, cut through the red tape in terms of what people need to know. My concern again is we have all these programs and people can't, you know, get the money that they need right now. So I want to be that kind of springboard. I want to be that voice of the people in terms of telling them what they need to know. And also, you know, interviewing some good people, interesting people and giving a different perspective, a more balanced perspective, not as biased kind of in the middle, telling you what I think is right, telling you what I think is wrong. All right, Manny, you're out. Out, buddy. We, I told you we'd have to kick him off stage. Manny, <laughs> hey, thanks. Stay safe out there. and We'll check back with you. Thank um, you, Manny. Folks, Wild West Crypto Show. We'll be back here in two minutes. The coronavirus is real. Whether it becomes a full-blown epidemic remains to be seen. Regardless, I'm telling my family and friends to be prepared. I've enjoyed telemedicine from the comfort of my own home for years. Now, with my Veritas, I feel safe and secure. If my grandchildren or I show any symptoms, I can speak with a doctor 24 hours a day, seven days a week for just $19.99 a month. Video conferencing is also available. In addition to 24 seven phone support, you will also receive $10,000 in life insurance and up to 200 generic prescriptions for free. Protect yourself and your loved ones from the safety of your own home for just $19.99 per month with a money-back guarantee. Don't wait until clinics are overrun. Get your peace of mind today. Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And who do we have today? Jonathan. Cryptocurrency Wire. Jonathan, how are you doing, my man? Oh, everything's good here. And how about for you too? Good, good. We're uh, social distancing. It's uh, it, it's we're three foot Canadian. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so so obviously we know what dominates the news, but let's let's get people to take a little step back and let's talk about some news that is going to apply to us for a long, long time. Let's dive right into your first one here. 
Civic and CoinCover announced the first of its kind crypto wallet with a $1 million protection guarantee. $1 now. million. That's one, a big that's, deal. That's a good one. So tell us about that. Dive into it. Yes, yeah, so a million dollars should be plenty for most of your viewers. And essentially, it's covered by Lloyds of London's underwriters. And Civic Wallet is now the first and only non-custodial, that's important, non-custodial crypto wallet to offer such a guarantee. The CEO of CoinCover made a really good point, I thought, by saying that protection for consumer level cryptocurrency is long overdue. And this alliance is designed to provide consumers with you know, the peace of mind that they really need to enter into the crypto space in greater numbers. So I felt like this was a really good, timely, uh, put out announcement for the time that we find ourselves in and, and the searches. I don't know if you guys have been watching uh, the charts, but people are searching Bitcoin all over the world more than they have in a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, cryptocurrency, you know, digital currency is certainly on the rise because of these times, you know, man, you know, um, uh, you know, people are even worried about how well the banks are going to do and you know, what kinds of things are going on. So, uh, yeah, very, very timely. And to your point, a lot of folks that are reluctant to go and do this in their crypto wallets and all that, this will give them that level of security that now all of a sudden the upside's worth the risk. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brent. Oh, big time. But, you know, here's the interesting because now we're talking about something that's going to give them confidence to get those in. And apparently that's only two-thirds of the world, two-thirds of the people, because nearly one-third of the people believe cryptocurrency is used primarily for illegal purchases, but actual purchases may be more boring. Talk about that one. For sure, and it really amazes me how this stereotype has lingered from way back in the early days uh, when most people didn't even know about the word Bitcoin. And while I've heard you know, a lot of people believing this, I never seen data on the actual percentage, so I was, I was quite shocked. And visual objects, they're the ones who surveyed, they brought in a hun uh, 980 plus people to compile this data and there was all kinds of other insights. I, I definitely recommend looking up that release. What people are actually buying include food, clothes, gold, and even stocks. And I really appreciate how they use this announcement to support the use case for digital currencies. They really um, point out quite a few things, including that Microsoft now accepts Bitcoin at the, at the Xbox store. Overstock, we know they've been in crypto for a long time, accepting crypto before any of the other major online retailers. And then there's other big names that are included as well now, KFC, Expedia. Uh, so it's, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal to see how you know, things are changing, but there's still quite a few out there that believe only illegal goods are being purchased. Yeah, exactly. And you know, Jonathan, I hear it myself when, when I meet new people and tell them I'm doing stuff in cryptocurrency, about one in three, which kind of yeah, fits this, yeah. about one in three goes in and says, oh yeah, that's that illegal stuff the drug runners are using. <laughs> and, um, you know, so it, it is, that stereotype is held on. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, and you know, there was a lot of money spent to create that stereotype. And you know, we, we know that it came from a lot of the people that were trying to get ahead of the train because they were behind the train and they spent a lot of money to try and get there. So it's, it's, it's lingered. That's for sure. You know, a new survey reveals Americans are seeking cash and gold in those tumultuous times. Talk about that, Jonathan. I thought your viewers here would be really interested in seeing just how far down the list crypto turned out to be in this survey. Uh, but of course the question was essentially what's the safest asset class of them all? Crypto is relatively new, so it shouldn't be that surprising, but only 1% said crypto with U.S. Treasury issued securities coming in second to last at 9.6%. Real estate, stocks, and bonds came in between those two and precious metals with cash being the most popular response at 33.5%. And you know, you just have to stop and wonder what would happen if cash is no longer the safe haven it has been for so many years? Obviously, gold and silver is next on the list and would benefit greatly from that shift. But for actual commerce, particularly in our digital age, has become even more important. Only cryptocurrencies are a viable option on that list. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And, and what hasn't, I haven't seen anywhere taken into consideration the. It started out at over two trillion dollars. Yeah. Ultimately, it's going to be six trillion they print for this thing. How much devaluation does that cause in the marketplace? And nobody's even talking about it. No, 
<laughs> and that's because every other country is doing the same thing. So, yeah. I mean, the devaluation is is on a personal level to each individual, but basically the entire world's devaluing itself. Absolutely. Jonathan, let me tell you something. Burned up another segment. Thank you always for giving us, you know, the other things from around the world that keep our show interesting. You and Havala stay safe out there, and we'll see you next week. All right. Sounds good. Always a pleasure. Howdy, folks. My name is Jonathan Kime, and I am the Communications Director of Cryptocurrency Wire. It's just one brand of over 30 that are part of the Investor Brand Network that we've developed over 10 years. So we've got lots of brands, most of them focused on the investment crowd. And what we primarily focus on with our Cryptocurrency Wire brand is to connect mainstream and financial markets with the latest innovations that are coming out in crypto. So that way they're informed and can benefit from the technology and the inventors you know, behind them can benefit from you know, all their labors and all the great things that they're coming out with. If you would like to reach out to us, feel free to go to our website at CryptocurrencyWire.com or you can follow us for the latest news on Twitter at CryptoNet. Wire. All right, folks, welcome to a special Corona edition of the Wild West Crypto Show. And, and I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And Brent, I think we ought to talk about cowboy logic. Well, you know, I think some cowboy logic's in need. It is. It, uh, it, in it, severe need. It is. So let me tell you, if you remember a month ago when right. people laughed at us because we put on bandanas. Yeah, we had the bandanas on. Yeah, and, and of course in the old days, you've ridden enough horses, oh, yeah. and, you know, both mechanical yeah. and the real ones, yeah. where if you're getting dust in your face or something, you put a bandana on. Uh -huh. and, you know, uh -huh. it Hell, I, I wore a bandana when I, when I rode that one bar stool that had the longhorns on it. <laughs> yeah. Bandana's yeah. always in style. Yeah, and they're not just for going in, you know, it, good Good guys and bad guys use it, but that our founding fathers, and you know, I think, Brent, because we deal with this every day, I think that a little cowboy logic needs to be brought into yep. this corona yep. Yep. You know? Yep. Oh, I, I definitely agree. And you know, you, you, it's cowboy logic. You may call it common sense. You may call it a, uh, a healthy measure of doubt um, or, a, or a discernment. Yeah, yeah. I want to use a big word. It's discernment. We're it, a, Cowboy discernment. It is. And instead of running around like Chicken Little where the sky is falling, it's right. a, it makes sense that if you close the barn after the cow's out, you haven't done any good. <laughs> right? Well, and you know one of the reasons Cowboy Logic is, is kind of uh, uh, not being used a whole lot is we have gone so far from our agrarian roots. Mm -hmm. Okay, because in the old days, the old ranchers, the old farmers, you know, um, they wouldn't have been running out of toilet paper because they'd already had whatever they needed. They wouldn't be running out of food because they've already got it canned and pickled and, and, and in the root cellar. And and for those of you that are real young, just look up what a root cellar is. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that you can kind of understand it. And But we have become a just in, just in time, heavily computerized, a supply chain that can give you 15,000 versions of the same cereal product. Yeah. Okay. And if you want nuts in it, you got nuts in it. If you want nuts and chocolate chips in it, you can have, you know, and all this kind of stuff that only is allowed because of computerization. Well, now all of a sudden all this breaks down and everybody goes uh, hog wild pig stupid. Yeah. Uh, over, over everything where our forefathers would have thought, what are you talking about? For instance, you know, the world war two, yeah. uh, all the folks in world war two, they rationed, you know, rubber, they rationed all kinds of things. Okay. And, and we're trying to tell people to stay home and, and do one of those Netflix, uh, what's that, where they watch it. Oh, binge the, watch. Yeah. Binge yeah, watch. Yeah. You know, we're, we're telling people to stay home and binge watch for two weeks. And I don't know that I can do it. That's just about the, it's about the end of me. But you know, I got news for you. your grandfather or great grandfather was charging the beach in Normandy, uh, risking his life while his wife was home working in the aircraft factory That's right. and so on and so forth. And so um, we need as a nation to kind of cowboy up a little bit yeah. um, and pull our bootstraps up and, and look at this thing for what it is. Yeah. Yes, it's terrible. Some people are dying. Yes, it's a highly contagious deal. But, you know, if you have a couple cows die in your herd of something unknown, you don't go shoot the rest of them just to make sure you got rid of them. Yeah, and you also if, if you want if you want to if you want to own the ranch next year. Yeah, exactly. It, it, and if you have, I mean, we do it out there on the ranch. If if your old neighbor across the fence 
if he's sick, you naturally just kind of stay away from each other as you're passing in the old yeah, pickup truck. You, you, you know? didn't call it social distance. You called it uh, Bob Sick. Hey, Bob. That's right. That's right. Hey, <laughs> you're down in the feet, so we're the general story. Yeah, did you hear old Bob Sick? Yeah, I did. I, mean, I saw him the other day away from the distance. It's cowboy logic, folks. It makes sense. And if you get a cat, one of your cows in the herd that happens to be sick, you sequester the cow. You don't sequester the herd. You know, and I understand, I mean, there, this thing, one of the things I found myself doing, this is interesting. So I'm not running around in gloves. I've done it a couple of times for fun. I don't have a face mask on or any of that. But I have noticed that when I go into a store, I'm intentionally staying four or five feet away from sure. folks and I'm not getting in their exhale, yep. you know. And that's just kind of cowboy logic. The sprinkler is spraying and you don't want to get wet. You don't walk through <laughs> I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. The, you know, the other interesting thing is, is um, cowboy logic is uh, simple math, okay? <laughs> and, and, and I'm a simple man. One plus one equals two. Two plus two equals four. Yeah. I'll never forget. I was in second year calculus at Texas A&M University in the late 70s. And, and basically, the professor is up there trying to explain to us how all these calculus algorithms and everything eventually gets you close to an answer. And so I raised my hand. Yeah, Mr. Bates says, well, why don't we just come up with the answer? <laughs> yeah. Well, because in engineering and all the places that you'll use this calculus, you know, that you're approximating the answer within a standard uh, of deviation that's acceptable for what you're doing. I said, oh, so the bridge don't fall down if you're this close to the answer. Why don't we just find the answer? <laughs> and then we know the bridge won't fall down, okay? Yeah. And they didn't like my black and white uh, mentality. But I think what cowboy logic is telling us right now is, is that um, the statistics used to create a lot of the decisions that have gone on turned out to be bad statistics. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding out is, is that because a lot of those statistics were, were run off of things that were unknown, mm -hmm. or it was off of information where we've been lied to, mm -hmm. which is even worse, okay? Mm -hmm. And so now, now I find it interesting, they're starting to talk about, talk about cowboy logic, is okay, who's, who's ox are we gonna gore in this deal, <laughs> yeah. okay? Because it's cost us a fortune, and we've been lied to by these people, and misguided by these people, and you, you know, Trump's looking for somebody to fire and somebody to send the bill. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. As is the entire governments, all the governments around the world. Yeah. And so it's going to be interesting to see because you kind of hear that little drum beat. You know, uh, you know, you've had some some uh, Democrats that have talked about reparations and and you know, and they're trying to get money from hundreds of years ago. Oh yeah. You know, uh, you got the the drum beat of a lot of governments that are looking for somebody to pay the bill now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you know, and Brent, I have to tell you, let's talk about a couple of givens, okay? Right. The Chinese are going to lie to us, okay? <laughs> well, the Russians are going to lie to us. When Chernobyl blew up, and we're sitting over here in some of our apple and, or and, 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 and orange trees, the yeah. orchards are glowing in the dark, yeah. and they're saying, no, there's not a problem, there's nothing to see. <laughs> they are going to lie to yeah. us. When China goes and says, there's nothing here, it's not even communicable, and the World Health Organization gets on and goes, it's not even communicable, it's yeah. not even communicable, they're going to lie to us. Wait, 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 what is it? We pay 20, is it 21, 23, 27? We pay in the 20s yeah. of, the, of the World Health Organization's budget, yeah. and China pays like one. Yeah, and we're 5% we're of the world's population, yeah. and yeah. they're 20% of the world's population. Yeah, that makes sense. But what, my point about this is, if you take a couple of givens, so we know the Russians and Chinese are going to lie to us, when they're now telling us, okay, here's the next you know, thing, it went, they're lying to us, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Why? Why do we believe? What I love about it is, and, and I, I kudos out to Trump. You know, he goes in. Biden said, "Hey, I'd talk to Trump." Trump said, "I'd enjoy a phone call." I, I'm watching the news this morning. Trump goes, "Said it's a good call." I mean, 15 minutes. You know, countries at, is what's at interest for all of us. And blah blah blah. So Trump goes and reports he had a pretty good 15 minute call with Joe Dumbass Biden, right? Yeah. And I called him Dumbass Biden because he is a dumbass. <laughs> But anyway, Trump extended that, right? I will tell you, go and look at Joe Biden's Twitter. He's on there and he's trashing Trump. Yeah. I mean, give me a freaking break. That's why he is Joe dumbass Biden. Well, I, and I'll tell you what, the thing about Trump, you can like him, not like him, call him orange man, call him, you know, bad hair, call him whatever you want to call him, but it's irrelevant, okay? We're fortunate 
that we have someone like him in the office right now that is able to call the other pipe, call the other side. You know, if you're a real estate developer, especially of the magnitude he is, do you know how thick that man's skin is, even though they call him thin skin? It's about that thick. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's used to being the bad guy in every room. Okay? Yeah. And so the bottom line of it is, is um, he's willing to go talk to people and, and put personalities aside. He'll pick up his sword and go fight another day. But you don't get deals done if you're not willing to kind of do that. You bet. And it's the reason we've been stalemated in Congress for the whole time he's been president is because I, I have to tell you, Nancy Pelosi, AOC, Bernie Sanders, across the spectrum, those fools are making decisions every single day that don't do you, the American public, any good. And I'm not saying that there isn't a whole stable oh, yeah. no, no, of no, no, all listen. of them doing it. On the, on the other side of the aisle, you know, if, if there's nothing that cowboy logic doesn't come out of this experience with is term limits. Yeah. Uh, balance the budget. Um, you know, don't be throwing money around and letting them put it in. Line item things. veto. Line it's item a veto. You know, make these governments in the state be prepared for these kinds of events rather than spending money on pet projects and so on and so forth. So it, we said when this all started that it was going to be a paradigm shift. Yeah. I think it's going to be a paradigm shift in finance. I think it's going to be a paradigm shift in government. I think it's going to be a paradigm shift in the deep state. Yeah. I mean, this is, this, everyone is suffered at the hands of this. And if we I, collectively as voters can't wake up and smell the coffee and decide that, Hey, you know what? We got to do something about this. And frankly, I'm personally very much for the convention of states. You bet. And let's go in and make some of these things part of the constitution that we don't have a ruling elite political class. Yeah. Uh, and guess what? They got to have the same health care as us. They have to live by the same laws we do. You know, uh, we're not, we're not their serfdom by any stretch of imagination. If that doesn't come out of this, well, then, and then we're plumbing up with the dummy. Yep. And folks, I, I tell you what, we'll leave you with this thought, but final piece of cowboy logic. If you vote those same dumbasses back in that are doing this to you, you deserve what you get. Okay? <laughs> Amen to that. That's cowboy logic. Amen to that. Folks, stay tuned. We'll check in again tomorrow with our regular show. Are you about to miss out on the next big boom? In the 1970s, the U.S. military tapped the power of the human mind. Elite soldiers learned how to see and know things across space and time, a form of psychic espionage called remote viewing. Today, some of the top remote viewers in the world are looking ahead to our new digital monetary system. Each week, the crypto viewing team looks for the untold secrets and inner workings of cryptocurrencies. There is going to be a quick peak and a quick rise. Who are the players? IBM teaming with a large Asian conglomerate. What's their intent? Sense of the mass adoption. We're talking global. Which will rise to the top. Watch future events unfold before your very eyes. Sign up today at patreon.com slash crypto viewing. Now stay tuned for the good, bad, and ugly. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And it is time for the good, the bad, and, and the, the ugly. ugly. So today's good, you know, Brent, I'm not a big fan of Jack Dorsey. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, I know. No, well, I mean, you know, we, we we find ourselves in Twitter jail. In fact, you know, I finally opened up a Twitter, a, a Redneck Cowboy Twitter account, yeah. and I got I got banned before I even got fully implemented. <laughs> you got banned before you had a yeah, tweet? I yeah, I got banned before I'd done anything to piss anybody <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah. But, but I have to tell you, we give credit where credit's yep. due. When you're out on the farm, buddy, yep. you, you know, the, the guy who ropes the most of them, you give him credit if you don't like it. Jack Dorsey has given away almost a third of his wealth, a billion dollars, Towards this Corona fight, yeah, I, hats off on that one. Absolutely, I, mean, I and and you know what? I, I saw another deal, and I mean, you know, I, I hate to minimize, you know, people's efforts, but Beyonce gave away five million dollars, and it'd be like you and I putting five bucks in the church plate, but it made yeah. global news, and 
I put more than five bucks in the church plate and I never made global news. For no, it, I you? haven't either. So you wealthy folks that are sitting on piles of cash that have been given to you by people that watch you on TV or go to your music or use your platform like the Jack Dorsey's leading the charge. I want to see headlines like this all over the place. And you know what? Sunday, I'll put 10 bucks in the church plate yeah. from afar. I'll hit 20 if they but, keep giving the billions away. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But kudos to Jack Dorsey. He, he stepped up. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. Like, you know, in the country, if you lay an egg, you got to tell them they laid an egg, you know. But if you do something good, you get the, the, the hat tip. So, there you, you go. Know, there there you, go. you go. So let's talk about bad, but with an upside, all right? Yeah. Zoom data scandal shows that blockchain may be the future of communications. Now, listen. I love Zoom, and I just told you yesterday, my dad, who's who's 90, going to be 91 in July, we had 13 of the extended family all on Zoom, uh, and my wife and I and my dad and, and one, were just one of those 13. And it was, it was great fun. We got to see great grandbabies and got to find out that one of my nieces is pregnant and due in July. That's which awesome. Which means, Haley, you should have told us about it a long damn time ago. But anyway, <laughs> um, regardless of that, you know, wonderful way to in social this, distance in this social distancing world. And of course, they're in Rio Dosa, Rio Dosa, Fort Worth, you know, Houston, Austin, all over the place. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, wonderful. But Zoom got hacked a while ago, mm -hmm. and and you know, and so now all of a sudden, you know, they're stealing some of the content. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, you can steal all of our Zoom content. Go ahead and play it, and maybe you'll find a market we already haven't already stuffed it into. You know, yeah, that, that'd be good. Yeah. But you know, there again. But guess what? A way to solve that is the blockchain. You bet. Matter of fact, we were reached out to on Sunday by a blockchain solution. I wrote right back to him and I said, okay, we're interested. We want to use this right away. Right. Platform isn't quite ready. Right. And, and, and they had reached out to us saying, hey, right. we want to talk about this. I naturally assumed it was going to be ready. Right. When it is ready, we will use it and tell you about it. But that is, uh, you know, Brent, In when Hurricane Harvey moved through, right. All the people that flee out of fear, oh, they don't yeah. want to get flooded, oh, yeah. and they take their dogs and the yeah. pictures and all that, and who moves in? The thieves. <laughs> the thieves. That's because the thieves never move out. That's okay? right. That, that, they they don't go away. <laughs> they stay right there because your stuff's right there. <laughs> That's right. And you're not guarding it anymore. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Or the big dog or your neighbor. Yeah. So it was a natural thing that Zoom didn't really do their homework when they started this whole thing and the permissions and all that stuff. And I read it, I ad nauseum. Bottom line is it's pretty easy to go and hack it. We love Zoom. We, yeah. we, we've used them over, what is the other one? Uh, Skype. Skype. Yeah. Well, and you know, I've been a long proponent of the death penalty for hackers. So um, anybody want to join that cause with me, uh, that that would probably end it real quick. But yeah. we can't we can't wait 15 years to kill them. Oh, no. Uh, we yeah. got to kill them in about 15 minutes once yeah. we catch them. So, yeah. Anyway. Hey, actually, bring a hacker to Texas. We ought to start a campaign. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, bring a hacker to Texas. Yeah, we, we, can, we, we can help out. We All help right. him out. <laughs> so, so then we go to the ugly. All right. Okay? And it, this is ugly for fiat. But it's actually promising for cryptos, okay? And so, you know, what's happened is with this $2 trillion, and now they're going to add one or two trillion or four more trillion to it. Yeah. And basically... Pretty soon they'll be up to some real money. <laughs> they will be, exactly, exactly. What they did was Tim Draper, who's a Bitcoiner, I mean, he's a right. big cryptocurrency oh, yeah. guy. He came out and he said, the governments are putting printing super amounts of money. I don't even know how much super amounts are. That's a whole bunch. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And 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 what they're saying is it'll, it'll take, how long will it take to recover? Because, you know, the hope is, and, and in Trump doing this in his presidency, Reagan did it and all that, you can go in and you can work your way out of a crisis like this no differently than if you had the refrigerator go out in your house and you didn't have the extra money. So you borrowed the money to buy a new refrigerator, but you put it into the queue. Over time, you're going to pay off that refrigerator. Right. Well, you know, the basic problem is, is you know, they floated all this money just so that they didn't have a cascading of debt collapsing and foreclosing and collapsing and foreclosing and collapsing and foreclosing. And so they didn't really do it for any logical reason. And of course, Tim Draper's looking at it from a logical standpoint. Yeah. And, and it, it wasn't. My only concern is, is without cryptocurrency and without wallets and out the ability to hit a button and send the money, uh, how people? How many people actually ever see this money? Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be a whole lot of them. No, that's exactly right. So, folks, uh, Wild West Crypto Show. We'll be back here in two minutes with another great piece of the show.
Most financially successful people own assets that make them money while they sleep. They usually own real estate, vehicles, intellectual property, equipment, and more. These assets make passive income through leases, subscriptions, royalties, and fees that don't require time, energy, or attention. Your assets do the work and you collect the check. So what kind of asset should you buy? The most valuable companies in the world, like Amazon, Google, and Apple, all have the same thing in common. They make a majority of their revenue from data technology assets. Storing, collecting, processing, and providing data. It's all about the data. What if you could own data tech assets with a low upfront cost? Introducing Apex, a proprietary technology built to process and mine data and render artificial intelligence and 3D gaming at exceptionally high rates. Apex Tech has partnered with SafeTech, a subsidiary of a publicly traded company called InvestView. SafeTech's business model leverages Apex technology to disrupt the multi-trillion dollar data tech industry, giving you the competitive advantage. SafeTech's growth strategy is to capture a significant share of the market. SafeTech will enter into a 60-month lease with owners of Apex Systems. Why would they do that? Why not just buy all the equipment themselves? The same reason most companies lease instead of own. To scale quickly, without the upfront costs, and for the tax benefits. So how do you get started? You purchase an Apex system. Then, you can lease it to SafeTech for 60 months at a rate of $500 per month. That's a total of $30,000 paid to you over the life of the lease. So what's your responsibility besides purchasing the Apex system? Nothing. During the lease, SafeTech is responsible for any maintenance costs to keep things running for you. Just collect a check every month for the next 60 months. This tremendous financial opportunity positions you to follow the strategies of the financially successful. You can leverage data technology to produce passive income that generates revenue without your time, energy, or effort. This is what is meant by creating multiple streams of income, but the opportunity to participate will not last forever. If this concept fits your financial goals, take action today while you still have the chance. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show for the Over the Fence Post segment. I'm very honored to have none other than the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Donald, thank you so much for coming and showing up and let me get a little bit of things off of my chest to you. It's a very exciting time. I know you're very busy and I do appreciate you leaving the Secret Service uh, out of this venture. So Donald, here's what I want to tell you, kind of real estate developer to real estate developer. Obviously, I'm not of the caliber that you are, but you know, I can't help but think that this is going to be the perfect time to make some wholesale changes in our government. I mean, after all, until we make America free again, we're not going to be great again. And right now, you and I both know because the industry that we're in, we're not free. In fact, you know, most of the country, you can't go out and buy a piece of property and go build you a building on it without answering to the county or the city or the state government in regards to regulations of all kinds of things. In fact, we've even had some of our veterans come and want to go off grid, build their own house, and no, they can't do it. In fact, they get their house shut down by the government. All right. Well, gosh, then we look at all the money we've been printing and we appreciate you printing it because there's a lot of people that still got to make their payments while they don't have any work. But wouldn't it be a great time for us to kind of really get a grip on that money thing? And, uh, and, and maybe get the Fed under total control. And in fact, you know, because this is a, a crypto show, Donald, you need to think about some cryptocurrency. In fact, the U.S. is the reserve currency of the world. If we came up with a U.S. cryptocurrency, it'd be the reserve cryptocurrency of the world. In fact, it probably would rival Bitcoin before it's all over with. It'd be that stable coin that most of the marketplace is looking for. But the other wholesale changes I'd love to see you make is, Let's do something about taxation. I mean, yeah, granted, we had to put the deadline all the way back out to July or whatever it is. And the reality is there are all these accountants out there that are very, very smart people. And if you don't believe them, they'll tell you that they're very, very smart people. And they do all of this complex filing and they know all of the different rules and the regulations. That is a level of human capital that has got to be unleashed on the marketplace. And we need to get all those accountants out there and give them a real job. 
Let them become an entrepreneur. Let them become a small businessman, and they will help the economy thrive. You know, most of the people end up spending more in doing their taxes than a lot of them do in actually paying toward taxes. And especially the wealthy, you and I both know, they use all kinds of loopholes, and they buy those loopholes through organizations and lobbying and, you know, buying this senator that, and this senator that, whatever their choice of that is, and I won't even insult the audience by trying to determine what that is. But the reality is, is we've been selling this country one piece at a time through legislation. In fact, last time I remember, we broke up Standard Oil because it became a monopoly. But yet, how many monopolies do we have today, Donald? I mean, think about it. We are nothing more than a country of legislated monopolies. God forbid you come up with a better idea because you can't get the better idea to the market. Why? Because you've been out lobbied by big business. They don't want those great ideas to hit the marketplace. And then it's find it very interesting how we're having to get the FDA to change all their guidelines. Wait, you mean the FDA is, is, is hindering the advancement of drugs in this, in this time period of, of such adversity? Well, sure they are, because basically they're not really interested in, in getting the drugs to market unless they've done this ironclad blind study, this yada, 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 all of this stuff. In fact, today, my guess is aspirin couldn't get through the FDA. And so it's a perfect time for us to kind of sit back and look at all that our country has done. We've taken 275 years or so and allowed lawyers to screw up our legislative system, our judicial system, and our financial system. And I think it's time that we have fellow businessmen like us to come back and bring it back to reality. Gosh, isn't this a great time for us to have a convention of states? I'd love to have term limits. In fact, gosh, if we had term limits, most of the people that are in the Senate today would not be in the Senate today. Most of the people that are speakers and, and minority leaders and all this other kind, they wouldn't be speakers because they'd be out getting a real job somewhere else. Our founding fathers never, never envisioned a ruling elite class that could make laws they didn't have to live up to and do their offline trading. Donald, you and I both know nobody gets to be a multi-multi-millionaire on a $170,000 a year salary as a congressman or a senator. At 30 years, there's no way 30 years of $170,000 a year income with the expenses they have of that position is going to allow them mathematically to suddenly be worth 30 million, 40 million, 50 million, but they all are. And so you and I both know that. And so guess what? I'm, I hope that you're ready and you're up to the challenge that in your second term, we vote you in enough help that you can make some huge systemic changes. And then guess what? Next time we can talk over the fence post about how great it became and how free America is now. It's the Wild West Crypto Show, and I'm Brent Bates, over the fence post. <laughs>《I'm Drew Taylor from Kerrville, Texas. I've had the great pleasure of joining some of the top real estate investors from all over the United States and Canada. We want to buy your home. We buy in all price ranges, all conditions, and all circumstances. And because we are cash investors, we can close much quicker than a normal real estate deal that uses a traditional mortgage. You don't even have to worry about doing repairs, or if your mortgage is upside down, we will still buy your home. If you need to sell your home quickly and need a fair offer, then just fill out the form next to this video. We will then match you with one of our experienced investors. They will contact you within 48 hours to discuss your property and your situation. If you can't wait 48 hours, no problem. Scroll down to the bottom of this page and click on the sell quick button. You will be taken to a form to tell us about the details of your property. Fill out the form as completely as possible. This will speed up the process so we can match you to the right investor to get your home purchased. Thanks for coming by and taking the time to watch this video. I hope to see you at the closing table soon. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And, and Brent, I 
wanted to do a segment talking about that kind of reflects when we're kids, you know, oh, yeah. about the same age, oh, yeah. and then where we are today in this crazy planet. Oh, crazy planet. It is. Now, I remember being a kid, elementary school with no air conditioning, buses with no air conditioning. Yeah. And yeah. I remember that we would do uh, we would do the nuclear alarm drills. Do you yeah. remember that? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we were we were going to fight the Soviet Union oh, yeah. the whole time oh, yeah. I was a kid. Oh, listen, I, 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 had a, I had a personal friend that, I mean, he was ready to fight the Russians, I mean, clean up into the 80s. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. he, was, he, yeah. was, he was ready to go. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, Brent, at, our life was pretty simple then. I mean, we had a bicycle. I, oh, yeah. I had to get up 5 o'clock in the morning, milk a cow, and oh, I yeah. set my own alarm. Today, kids can't get out of bed unless the parents coax them out oh, of bed. Well, you know, in our day, it's like, here, kid, you know, here's, here's a buck. Yeah, I mean, you could last the whole day on a buck. A buck? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, because, yeah. I mean... Yeah. Candy was a penny. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Five five cents of is a big, you know, Babe Ruth or something like that. And it, wherever your bike would take you, that's where you went. Yes. And yeah. and the reality was is that if you were getting out of hand, somebody was going to get you back in hand. And there was a whole lot of somebody. Oh yeah. It didn't have to be your parents. It didn't have to be your aunts, your uncles. You know, none of that sort of stuff. It's like, boy, what do you quit that? You're, you're, no. you're old J.B. Taylor's boy, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Hey, you want me to tell J.B. you're doing No, no, no. <laughs> Please In don't. Fact, you know, I, uh, the, we used to have a family joke, you know, that, that my dad would come home. We could tell somebody's fixing to get spanked. Well, there was four of us, so we'd all pick a corner and pray that it wasn't time for our corner, you know, kind of a deal. But, you know, and we make those jokes. But, I mean, the reality is, is... You know, my parents disciplined us mm -hmm. through spanking, mm -hmm. but we knew that they loved us. We knew that they broke fellowship with us because we did something that we were told not to do. Yeah. And the consequence was you got a lick or two, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and guess what? You know, nothing, nobody got killed. You yeah. know, nobody got maimed. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're not killing and maiming kids. We're just branding them idiots for the rest of their life. Like somehow we... How we raise them. Basically. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, overuse of medication. My my son Jason, who you right, know well, right. he's thirty three nowadays. So when he was six, seven years old, yeah. first thing they do, he was part of the initial parade where the teacher and the counselor sit down with me. And oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm an old uneducated autodidact, right? So they don't expect much out of me. So they go and they say, Mr. Taylor, uh, your son is causing problems in the school, and we think you need to have him put on Ritalin. Uh huh. That went over well, Hunter. Yeah, that doesn't worry. And I said, I said, we're not putting my son on Ritalin. I said, Tim, what the problem is, and this was at the Christmas break. And they said, I said, because we didn't have problems the first half of the year. Well, Jason didn't go to kindergarten. Yeah. So he had to he had to ramp up and catch up to all sure, the other kids. Sure. And, but by Christmas break, he'd caught up. He's a pretty smart kid. Yeah. Right. Now he's interrupting the other kids. <laughs> so I told him he doesn't need Ritalin. Uh -oh. You go and load his butt up on work, yeah, and yeah. that will keep him occupied, and yeah. that's what they did. Oh, well. But today, in today's society, everything is quick fix, quick fix well, of the pill. And, and the, the other problem is, is everybody wants to solve it, like you said, with pharmacology. Yeah. And, and you know, we now have these huge organizations with these huge budget, budgets who is supposed to out, be out there helping with everything from your mental health to your this to your that when a lot of these people need an attitudinal adjustment, a swift kick in the butt, mm -hmm. and somebody on them. You yeah. know? But instead, what they're going to do is they're going to drug them, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and we got a court system that's complicit in it. Mm -hmm. And, and then that's, a, that's a battle you've been knee-deep oh, in yeah. for a while. And once, and once they do that, well, then we're just down the stone's throw to they do a little marijuana or something. Well, now we got them on that. Now we put them on probation. Now now they're our indentured servant, and you know they're buying the... Uh, the police department and the justice department, all kinds of goodies because they're, they're billing them to death. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a whole different world. And I, I think it really breaks down to this. It's a lack of true community. It is. People don't care anymore. Yeah. And in fact, if you do care, it, the first thing that comes out of these people that are charged with this, oh, well, what are you doing? You yeah. Know, are, are, is there something nefarious going on? Yeah, here? that you're yeah, doing. Like, no, I'm just trying to help this person. Yeah. You know, well, what are you trying to help? I'm trying to keep protect them from you. Is what <laughs> yeah, I'm really trying yeah, to do, yeah. you know, as well as kind of graze them up a little bit and let them get started in life. So, you know, the times have changed, and I'm not sure they've changed for the best. I don't think they have, and Brent, to be honest with you, I think maybe out of this whole corona catastrophe, maybe we go back home a little bit more. Maybe we kind of reset a little bit and realize that all the shiny things that we've taught our kids to chase over the last three yeah, generations. Don't mean squat. Yeah, they really don't. So folks, let me tell you something. Get out there, hug somebody you love, do a stranger a favor, pay it forward, and uh, 
We could use a little change. Wild West Crypto Show, thanks for always tuning in. We'll see you next week.